Heads of state and government began to arrive in Cuba in order to participate in the 21st summit of the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of Our America People's Trade Treaty, ALBA TCP. Communities in the Brazilian state of Sergipe took to the streets to condemn the murder of suffocation at the hands of the police of an Afro-descendant citizen. And also a rally near the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C. to demand the implementation of gun control measures after a mass shooting in a Texas elementary school. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is From the South. I'm Joren Kerr, Gladys Quesada, and these are the news. We begin because on Thursday, the head of state and government began to arrive in Cuba in order to participate in the 21st summit of the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of Our America, People's Trade Treaty, ALBA TCP. According to the organizers, the purpose of the event is to share common development strategies as well as to analyze the regional geopolitical situation. The multilateral body was created in 2004 at the initiative of Fidel Castro and Hugo Chavez as a mechanism for the integration of peoples. The city of Havana will be the meeting point for dignitaries such as the president of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro Moros, who arrived on Thursday night accompanied by the first combatant, Celia Flores. And the National Registry of Colombia announced that all guarantees are in place for the development of the presidential elections, which will be accompanied by more than 27 international organizations. The registrar, Alexander Vega, stated that the eight accredited international electoral observation missions will be able to give an impartial opinion amid concepts that will help the electoral process in the country and emphasize that they will have biometric tools and other advanced software. For their part, authorities of the National Electoral Council urged political sectors that are developing a narrative of alleged electoral fraud to be responsible and not to generate a climate of opinion that could contribute to destabilizing the electoral environment. Also in Colombia, the establishment of the International Observation Mission for next Sunday's presidential elections took place on Thursday. The event was attended by the Minister of the Interior, Daniel Palacios, the Registrar, Alexander Vega Rocha, the President of the National Electoral Council, the CNE, Cesar Arbeo, among other personalities. During the ceremony, the Registrar, Alexander Vega, informed that some of these international delegations have a technical nature and have accompanied the different simulations that have been carried out. The official also emphasized that these elections will be most closely watched in history and reiterated that all guarantees are in place for citizens and political forces. The Vice President of Venezuela Delcy Rodriguez stated during her participation in the Eurasian Economic Forum that her country has a great exporting potential of multiple resources for the Eurasian Economic Union. During her speech, the Venezuelan diplomat emphasized that the natural resources the Bolivarian nation possesses to export to the different nations of the world include fruits, sea products, cocoa, meat, and other goods of the nation's agro-industry. On the other hand, the vice president highlighted the country increased its exports of non-traditional products by 76 percent. In this context, the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean reported that Caracas ranks eighth in Latin America and the Caribbeans in terms of exports increase. and economic cooperation in order to strengthen investment and cooperation mechanisms. This is the right path to be taken by the countries of the world that are far from the conflict. Understanding and dialogue should be the mechanisms for the resolution of any type of dispute. And in Mexico, more than 7,000 Haitian migrants waiting to cross into the United States are temporarily in asylum in the state of Nuevo León. The government provides asylum to these citizens who have temporary humanitarian visit card that authorizes them to stay in the country. Authorities detail that the migrants are housed in tent shelters, rented houses, or on public roads, depending on the capacity of the shelters, since they do not have the necessary capacity to accommodate all of them.
We move on to other topics. The president of Bolivia, Luis Arce, denounced on Thursday conspiracy plans of the right wing and called on the armed forces to remain on the side of the constitution. In the in the present circumstances in which anti-democratic forces continue their work to overthrow the democratically elected government, the doors of the barracks of our armed forces in general and of this brave regiment must remain closed to calls for sedition and alteration of the constitutional order of the plurinational state of Bolivia. And Bolivia's Minister of Justice, Ivan Lima, informed that the Constitutional Court rejected the unconstitutionality appeal filed by Janine Añez in the coup th second case related to the alleged crimes committed prior to her self-proclamation as the President of Bolivia. The Constitutional Court has ruled. This afternoon it has already notified about the specific action of unconstitutionality that have been presented by the defense of Mrs. Añez in relation to the crimes for which she has been tried. The resolutions contrary to the Constitution in the fulfillment of her duties have been rejected by the Constitutional Court's Admission Commission. Therefore, at this moment, the court that is trying the case in the city of La Paz can reinitiate the trial, it can reinstate it, and we hope and urge the judicial authorities that within the framework of due process, they can continue with this case, which is part of the Bolivian people's demand for memory, truth, and justice. At this moment, the Constitutional Court has eliminated the last legal obstacle that existed for the trial to continue. The allegations will be pronounced and the corresponding sentence will be dictated in accordance with the rules of due process. In Argentina, social and artisanal fishermen's organizations are demanding in front of the Congress a law to protect this sector. According to spokespersons of the Union of Workers of the Popular Economy, the so-called Canoaso protest held in front of the Congress building aims to improve working conditions and make this food producing sector more visible. The protesters propose the creation of a national registry of artisanal fishing, the construction of fishing terminals, and the creation of a fund for the promotion of artisanal fishing among other initiatives. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. Communities in the Brazilian state of Sorjipe took to the streets to condemn the murder of suffocation at the hands of the police of an Afro-descendant citizen. The demonstrations take place after police forces murdered Genivaldo dos Santos, a street vendor diagnosed with schizophrenia who was arrested in the municipality of Umbawa and locked up inside a police patrol car, which was filled with tear gas. The demonstrators demand justice for the murder of Dos Santos, which they denounce represents a new case of police violence against the black communities of the country. The Peruvian parliament approved a motion of censure against the Minister of Labor, Betsy Chavez. The motion was passed with 71 votes in favor during a plenary session held on Thursday. 28 parliamentarians voted against and 12 more abstained. Nine representatives from Peru Libre Party voted in favor of the motion. Peruvian President Pedro Castillo has now 72 hours to accept Chavez's resignation. Now we move on to other topics. Russian President Vladimir Putin addressed via video conference the plenary session of the first Eurasian Economic Forum in Kyrgyzstan. The forum on the subject Eurasian economic integration in the area of global shifts, new investment opportunities, opens with the participation of more than 2,000 representatives. In his intervention by video conference, the Russian head of state said that those nations interested in harming his country by imposing sanctions harm only themselves. In this sense, Putin explained that his administration took the necessary measures in key sectors to protect national sovereignty against systematic Western aggressions.
the government of Iran offered to host peace talks between Russia and Ukraine in the framework of the Russian special military operation in the country. Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian told his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov that his country supports dialogue to resolve the conflict between the two nations. Officials stressed that Moscow's military operation in Ukraine was caused by the provocative actions of the United States and NATO. Former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger participated virtually in the World Economic Forum held in Davos, Switzerland. During his speech, Kissinger said that if Ukraine does not restart negotiations with Russia, it could have disastrous consequences for the long-term stability of Europe, and stressed that a peace agreement should be reached. The war as a peace settlement, but the nature of that peace settlement it will determine whether the combatants remain uh, permanent adversaries or whether it is possible to fit them into a international framework. About eight years ago, when the idea of membership of Ukraine and NATO came up, I wrote an article in which I said that the ideal outcome would be if Ukraine could be constituted as a neutral kind of state, as a bridge between Russia and Europe. In the same context, Kissinger recommended a return to the pre-conflict status quo, at the same time that there should be no further escalation of the conflict. And the countries of the BRICS group, during a virtual conference, reaffirmed their willingness to take action to counteract the unilateral sanctions of the West, as well as the disinformation. According to a statement issued by the foreign ministries of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, there is a mutual interest in expanding contacts and exchanges between the two countries to deepen cooperations in the field of information support. And we have more news coming up after a final short break, so stay with us. We are back. Social movements rallied near the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C. to demand the implementation of gun control measures. The demonstration took place 48 hours after the massacre that took the life of 19 children and two teachers in a Texas elementary school. The demonstrators rejected the historical opposition to the use of weapons regulation by conservative and supremacist sectors and demanded the authorities to take action in order to avoid more violent acts inside the nation's educational institutions. Next. I don't know who's next. Me, my friends, my peers, and nothing's being changed. I'm a 17-year-old girl in high school, and something needs to be changed, and there needs to be laws in place. And the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, call on the world's governments to take action to ensure that schools are safe places for children. In a statement, UNICEF Executive Director Catherine Russell expressed her consternation over the recent massacre at an elementary school in Texas, United States. The High Representative sent her condolences to the families and loved ones of the victims, most of whom were children just under 10 years old. The African Union leaders are meeting Friday and Saturday in Malabo, Equatorial Guinea, for two consecutive extraordinary summits as the continent contends with humanitarian crisis, terrorism and military coups.
Around 20 heads of state as well as donors are expected to raise funds at the African Union's first extraordinary humanitarian summit. According to the African Union, of more than 30 million internally displaced Africans, more than 10 million are children aged under 15. A report by the UN Food and Agriculture Organization said that around 282 million of Africa's 1.4 billion inhabitants are underfed, an increase of 49 million of two, on 2019 levels. According to the data registered by humanitarian agencies, Africa today counts some 113 million people in need of food aid, of which 48 million are refugees, asylum seekers, and internally displaced persons. An urgent response to the need is necessary to preserve what remains of these people's human dignity. South Africa will need to spend $250 billion over the next three decades closing down its coal fire power plants and replacing them with green energy, according to a report released on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum. $125 billion of the total investment is needed to ramp up wind and solar power projects. The report was produced by academics at South Africa's Stellenbosch University in conjunction with the Blended Finance Tax Force, a body set up to help mobilize large-scale capital in a bid to end poverty in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And 11 bo newborn babies died in a hospital blaze in the western Senegalese city of Tiawokane, the president Maki Sall reported on Thursday. The tragedy occurred at the main Abdu Aziz hospital in the transport hub in Tiawokane and was caused by a short circuit. The maternity unit was equipped to take care of 13 babies. In this context, President Maki Sall sacked his health minister, Abdullaye Diouf Sar, a government decree showed after the incident. Also, the head of state expressed his deepest condolences to the families and mothers of the 11 newborn babies. And likewise, World Health Organization chief Tedros Gebrezus also sent his deepest condolences to the parents and families of the babies who lost their lives in the tragic event. Security forces fanned out across a, a wide swath of central Khartoum on Thursday as police attempted to block the latest protest against military rule in seven months. Thousands of protesters, the most seen in about two months, marched towards the presidential palace in downtown Khartoum, demonstrating for civilian leadership and against an October 25th military coup. Security forces blanketed the presidential neighborhoods around the protest route, a main tear gas at protesters, starting about 3.5 kilometers away from the palace. And now we have breaking news. We go live to Havana as Latin American heads of state gathered to hold the 21st summit of the Bolivarian Alliance of the Americas member states, ALBA TCP. Latin American heads of state and other high top officials that rank top in the governments are arriving to Havana to the venues where they will hold the 21st summit of ALBA TCP, this alternative, the Bolivarian Alternative for the Americas. This is a fair organization founded by Hugo Chavez and also by Fidel Castro that um, is intended to organize, to join, to bring together all the Latin American countries under a fair premise of solidarity, cooperation, and also the retribution of values and the rescue of incoming values, the domestic values of the continent. As we can see, 
these venues in Havana are ready to host this uh, 21st summit of Alba TCP. All the heads of state and top officials are arriving since two days ago, like all the presidents, the prime ministers, and also the foreign ministers of every Latin American country that is a member of Alba TCP. As we know, one of the latest to arrive was president of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro Moros, who is here uh, to join and to attend to this summit. Also, he was a accompanied by uh, the first combatant, Celia Flores, uh, his wife, who also is going to attend this summit in under uh, status of invited to uh, status of guest to this summit. We were watching uh, these live images of the summit, the 21st summit of Alba TCP. We will have more details in further emissions, but now we have come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net and also join us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm your anchor Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.